Hey, um, here's Olivia Stodig. I just wanted to run you through this parametric uh, script to create a uh, half wing model using uh, Calculix graphics uh, and then doing uh, one finite element analysis on that. Um, so here we assume that you have Calculix graphics and Nastron installed, but you really only need Nastron if you do want to do the finite element analysis. Um, Calculix graphics is freely available um, and there's a reference in the readme file. So uh, the basic structure of this uh, uh, Python script is um, you have a you have the imports at the top. There's nothing um, too exciting in there. Um, we've got a list of parametric inputs. So here we are setting these parametric inputs at the top of the file. In reality, these could be set by another process uh, or uh, whether that's an analysis or um, uh, another Python script. Uh, and what we have in here is a variety of data. So we have the span and chord of the wing. So that's the length and the width um, of the wing in, in meters. Um, we have uh, a, a string here, which identifies a um, airfoil um, input file. So that's a CSV file, um, which looks like this. So it has the name of the profile at the top. And if you want to look where this comes from, uh, you can get copies from this website. Uh, and then you have a uh, list of X and Y values where the X is in the cordwise direction, um, goes from the trailing edge around the leading edge and then back to the trailing edge. Um, and the second value is the Y position. So it's a normalized um, airfoil shape in the standard format. Um, and you could input anything you want here. So we're using NACA 0012 um, for, for this example. Um, and the next input is, the, uh, is a master file for Nastran. So here I'm pointing it to a normal modes analysis. If I look at that, um, the top part here is very standard. We're just assigning some uh, standard um, aluminium properties to our, uh, to our wing and a shell uh, property with a thickness of uh, two millimeters. And these two files that are included will actually um, be generated by the Python script. So we have our boundary condition and, and all the um, grid and element um, cards. So going back to the Python script, um, we have here um, also uh, some information for the meshing. So uh, this will set the number of elements around the airfoil um, surface and the number of elements along the span of the wing. And we also have um, a merging operation that will happen on the uh, grid points. Um, so we can change that here um, if required. So this is actually um, a tolerance of two millimeters. Um, so when you execute the script, because we have this uh, if name equals to main at the bottom, it will just execute the main function with the parametric inputs. Um, and the main is our uh, flow of execution. So there's nothing complicated here. We start off by um, just printing the input to the uh, to our command line. Um, then we can uh, then we run uh, a few functions which generate the uh, uh, Calculix graphics input file, which is an FDB file. Um, then we execute that FDB file using Calculix graphics. Uh, which generates our Nastron input files. And finally, we run our Nastron analysis um, by just executing Nastron. So if we go through these in a bit more detail, the first function that we call here is this get geometry function. Uh, and if we look at that, um, it's split into a few other function calls. 
So anything that has got this underscore here, these are um, private functions that are listed at the bottom. And I won't go into too much detail on those except for the meshing one. Um, so the first one here is uh, reading our Airflow CSV file and generates um, a, uh, a list of um, uh, properties for our Airflow, which includes the Airflow coordinates. So let's actually just have a quick look at that if I go to that definition. Um, So you can see that we're just reading in the CSV file um, and we're then uh, reading these coordinates and uh, it does also uh, generate a plot. So we'll see that in a minute. Um, so you can check what the shape of the input looks like and it just returns uh, a dictionary that includes the name of the air file and the coordinates. Um, then the second function that's called here is um, a function that generates points and point sequences that can be understood by um, CGX. Um, the next one generates lines and then surfaces um, that can be understood by CGX. Um, so both of those, uh, all three of these are um, very specific to our example. Uh, feel free to have a look through them. There's nothing um, too complicated in there, but just note that until here, we have not actually done any meshing. Um, now, if I look at the next step in our um, main execution, we have this um, execute, C uh, sorry, we have this uh, get CGX input file. So, Again, if we look at that in a bit more detail, we can see that we're now specifying what we want, um, where we want to write the CGX uh, Calculix graphics input file to. Um, so what we have here is a call to a um, function that generates um, all the Calculix graphics commands in one string, and then writes that string to file. Um, here we don't actually have a very uh, long example, so we're just keeping this string in memory, um, and you'll see it's it's actually um, uh, quite quite simple. Um, so if I go to this get commands, so this one I was just going to go through in a bit more detail um, to explain what we're doing. Um, so we have as I, I explained before we have generated the points, point sequences, lines surfaces uh, and uh, uh, that's it. We, we generated those as um, geometries before. So here what we do is uh, create a Calculix uh, graphics um, command lines uh, from, this, uh, from this geometry data. So to know why uh, what the format here is, is we can we can actually look at the uh, Calculix graphics manual. Um, but for reference, um, I'm also going to show you what we expect this uh, Calculix graphics input file to look like. So um, typically what I would recommend is that you generate something like this by hand first to understand what the format is and what works and what doesn't work. Um, manuals are not always the best reference. Um, so try, try it uh, in a manual fashion first and then uh, automate it afterwards. So what we can see here is that we're just um, printing out these points in a loop. So we actually have, uh, let's see, 262 points. Uh, that's, that's geometry points um, that we create using the script. Uh, then we uh, also create uh, point sequences, which are these sequence A, uh, SEQA -E um, cards. 
So here we have to, uh, although this is one continuous sequence, we have to add these equal signs at the end to ensure that the sequence uh, continues. Uh, so this first sequence here is for the sequence of points at the root of our wing, which form the aerofoil section at the root of the wing. And then the second sequence here is for the um, same aerofoil, but at the tip of the wing. So we're assuming a, um, a constant uh, section aerofoil uh, height and um, chord for this example. Um, then we generate lines from these points and point sequences. Um, so have a look at what this means for Calculix. Um, but there's two different types of lines that we create here. Basically, the, the first two have got um, a, a line ID, a starting point, an end point, and then this here references our um, sequence, the first point sequence. Um, so that's the F4 points at the root of the wing. And what we're saying here is that we're creating a spline and we're actually uh, creating uh, 40 divisions along this, um, this spline. Um, and these 40 divisions is what will be setting um, the mesh refinement uh, for, for our final um, 3D mesh. Uh, just to point out that we have, even though it says 40 here, we will end up with 20 elements along, along the core, uh, along the airfoil surface. Uh, because we are actually, uh, CGX actually generates quadratic shell elements by default, which means that um, we have to generate double uh, the uh, mesh refinement value um, to get, uh, to, get um, to, to the expected number of elements. So the same thing for, the, uh, for these other two lines here. Uh, we have, these are actually our um, span-wise uh, training edge lines. And we'll see that um, even though we have two lines here, um, we will actually merge these um, once we have created the mesh. You do have to have two lines here uh, to be able to generate a um, surface in the next step because surfaces uh, by default and calculates graphics need to have uh, either three or four edges, I believe. So, so we can't actually um, uh, just specify the same line twice in the sequence. Um, and then finally, so going down on this side as well. So we've just created our um, surface here. Um, and then we uh, create an SPC set. So this is our uh, constraint at the root of the wing. Um, and then we mesh our surface. Um, so I think this just means that we are meshing a surface with a with shell elements. Um, this dimension doesn't actually get picked up um, by Calculix. So once we've meshed all, we can then do this merge uh, operation, which I just mentioned. So um, in our code, we can see that um, the merge tolerance is actually the variable that we picked up uh, from the um, from the input. And uh, finally, the last few lines here are um, sorry, that's the merge tolerance down here. Actually, the last few lines are uh, standard lines, so you can edit these. For example, if you oops, if you don't want to um, output uh, a Nastran file but another uh, format, so Abacus, for example. Uh, you could change this here. Um, but uh, we have here these uh, these send um, commands output our um, Nastran uh, uh, mesh and the SPC uh, cards uh, to file. And then finally, uh, we put this quit in here so that that uh, exits CGX. So uh, coming back to our our main code, we have now um, created our um, CGX uh, input file. 
And then we've got simply these execute CGX and then execute master uh, commands, um, which if you look at them are uh, sub-process calls um, to uh, CGX. Um, so CGX is running in background mode here with, a, with the input file. And uh, the same for uh, master one core, we just call master one directly with that input file. Okay. So let's have a look what happens if we execute this script. Um, so I'm just going to run this in the debug mode. And that didn't, oh, that did, yes. Okay. Okay, so we get some warnings here. And it's still running. Ah, yes, of course. Uh, it stopped running because I have the plotting flag set to on, which means that it waits for me to uh, look at this plot of the air fault section so I can see what, what, I've, um, what I've generated here. And I can also check um, that we have a small operation here in the air fault import where we um, set the trading edge node to have the same coordinate on the bottom and surface, top surface to make sure that we close this air fault profile here. So uh, I'm happy with that. I'll just close that and that should continue. That, that's fine. Okay, and we can see that it's running in the directory at the same time. So, and the main process. So that script completed without any errors. And now we could uh, look at our Nastron output file. Um, uh, before we do that, actually, we can see that we've uh, created this, uh, the FDB file that I was just showing you. We've uh, recreated that from the script, basically. So it's exactly the same as in the output folder. Um, we have also got these new uh, last one input files. So we've got our grids in here and we have our, scroll further down, we have our quite four elements. And these all point by default to um, shell, uh, shell ID one, uh, which is the ID that we have in our, um, uh, if we look at our uh, master file, we have a pshell one here, so that's fine. Um, so, and and here's our uh, SPC file. So by default, CGX outputs this as a, a SPC one, uh, going through all the degrees of freedom and through all the, the nodes that are constrained. So it's, it's not um, particularly. Um, efficient, but uh, it, it works. Um, and if we look at our Nastron output file now here, so we can see that uh, if we scroll down that far, we can see that um, the eigenvalue analysis actually completed. Um, we have uh, our first 10 normal modes um, that are output with the uh, frequencies here in Hertz. Um, and the good thing is we can see that our uh, model is, uh, doesn't seem to be floating around. So we have um, positive um, frequencies. Uh, and uh, we could look at this in more detail, but we can also now, uh, if we do have access to uh, astronomical pattern, we can open our model and have a quick look. So I'm just going to open it in a new window. And we're going to create a new database. Let's just call it temp. Okay. 
Um, so here we can uh, we can import uh, the results. Sorry, we can import the results from the analysis directly. Uh, so we have an H5 file that includes the input, uh, so the mesh. Uh, so if we set this to access results, attach HDF5, uh, and then read both. We've got uh, in our folder, we have our normal modes H5 that was just output. Uh, apply that. Okay, so now we can actually have a look at um, our mesh. By the way, um, if you uh, want to have the look at the mesh um, that's output from CGX, you can also load up CGX graphics um, and have a look at this. Um, obviously, you won't be able to see the results, but um, you should be able to verify that this is exactly the same mesh that um, CGX generated internally. So it's a nice shell mesh. This is our zero position. Uh, and then if we look at our results, we can see that we have got um, our first 10 normal modes here. Um, let's plot a few of the eigenvectors. Okay, and so we can see yeah, what we expect to see. Um, you know, our first mode is uh, simple bending of this um, F4 uh, shaped uh, cross-section uh, cross shaped wing. It's fully constrained at the root, so we have no displacements there. And then we have uh, the bending flexion. That's our second bending mode. Uh, that's our forward aft mode and so on. So um, yeah, so here we go. This is a parametric model generated uh, with Python and Tactix graphics. Uh, followed by normal modes analysis in last one. Thanks a lot for listening and please let me know um, if you have any questions or if you want to have some of these topics covered in more detail. Thanks.